Because it made them feel like they were virtually sharing a smile. And literally over 28 million people watched her go like cha-cha-cha within 72 hours. It even inspired some other people to dance too, including some really old people. it's never going to stop. But the one thing that we can do is we can figure out creative ways to just make people smile. That might be uploading a random dance video, whether you're a little kid or whether you're a grandpa on his front porch. Sometimes it's really important for us to realize that we shouldn't take life so seriously. But then this is what happens. You see, we try to live a happy life and try to find things to smile about, but then when you go home and you turn on the news, do you guys think the news is more full of a bunch of good news or bad news? Which one? Bad news. Bad news. Bad news. Well, if all of a sudden you're really wanting to be happy, like who wants to be grumpy? But then you go home, you turn on the news, you see negativity. Let's be honest. You can go on social media. You can find a bunch more negativity as well. You can also open up a magazine or a newspaper. There's more negativity. That sometimes some people think like, how can you change the world when there's so much to change? And this starts to shift the way that you look at the world. To help prove it to you guys, I want to have you guys participate in two experiments. This is going to be experiment number one. I want you to try your best with the way that we're projecting it here, but I know you guys can do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a word on the screen. What I want you to do is I want you to say the color of the word. All right, don't read the word. Just say whatever color that the word is. Do you guys get the rules? Okay, so if you saw this word right here, what would you say? Okay, good. How about right here? Blue. Amazing. Yellow. <laughs> All right. If you said yellow, I tricked you. You guys get the game now. Are you ready? Yeah. Say it out loud so you can tell the person next to you knows how to read. This is round one. <laughs> Round two. Yellow. Ready? Try to do this one as fast as you can. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> argument that was going on between your brain and your mouth. Raise your hand. Yeah. For some reason your brain's like, hey, the color of this word's white. And your mouth's like, okay, 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 okay. Orange. And your brain's like, no, this is white. And your mouth's like, ah, okay, sorry. <laughs> Orange. And your brain's like, no. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because 
This is what life is kind of like. You see, we're surrounded by our friends, good people. You're surrounded by other teachers and other people in your school, good people. Your family, good people. Your community, your sports, your athletic teams. We're surrounded by a lot of amazing people. But then this is what happens. If you turn on the news, right, or you see all this negativity, it's like it's painting a different picture of the world. One that's a little different than you. And then you wonder whose picture of the world is the right one. Is it yours? Or is it the one out there? And it creates this weird argument that's going on. Here's experiment number two. I'm gonna put a picture on the screen. On this photo, there's gonna be two animals. I want you to say out loud the first animal that you see in the picture. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, ready, here it comes. Three, two, one. Dinosaur! Dinosaur! Okay. How many of you guys said duck? Pumpkin. How many of you guys said like bunny rabbit? How many of you can see both the duck and the bunny rabbit? How many of you can only see one or the other? Okay, keep staring at it. It'll pop out. Now, this is why I love this picture. Because, now it might help if I go like this. Now, this is why I like this picture, because every single person looking at this picture, we're all looking at the same picture. But as you sit there, it's like try to relax your brain for just like a minute, and as your brain looks at this, it's gonna jump between both of them, but then it's gonna relax on one of them, right? Now, when you go outside in the world, you can see both the positive and the negative every day. Every the news button. If you click that button without typing anything in, you're usually gonna get the daily news, but if you put in search terms, um, it'll search for news articles with those terms. So I put in the search terms just good news and kindness. Then I hit go. Within milliseconds, I had 12 million responses. These are some of the cool ones I saw. One of them was an Arkansas teenager who saved for two years to buy his friend an electric wheelchair. I thought that was pretty cool. Another one was a street performer in New York who was ignored by everyone, but then four kittens decided to show up. And here's another one of a dog that just beat cancer. Now, this one was my favorite one. This one was actually in a middle school. In their middle school, they had an eighth grade basketball team. And on their eighth grade basketball team, they had one of their students had a mental disability. And he was getting ready to graduate to go from eighth grade to high school. And as he was getting ready to move from eighth grade to high school, the yearbook interviewed this one student. And they asked them the question, are you excited to go to high school? And his response shocked him. He said, no, I'm not. And they're like, why not? And he says, I'm the only person on the basketball team that's never made a free throw. And they're like, wait a minute, what? He's like, I've never made one. And they talk to some of the other basketball players, like, yeah, he shoots, he airballs it, he shoots, he completely misses. He's never made one. Now, every single one of you guys are in middle school. You guys also realize that if there was a student on a basketball team who's obviously not very good, who has a mental disability, has never made a free throw, that that's a prime candidate for someone to get teased, laughed at, and made fun of. But this middle school was different. What they said is like, look, you might be different than us, but you're still one of us. And on the last day of school, when everyone's like, peace out, we're going home, there was one eighth grade basketball player that says, you know what, I'm not going home. I'm gonna stay right here until my friend makes his first free throw. And what started as one basketball player grew to the basketball team, and it slowly grew to the entire eighth grade class. And here's a middle school student singing to her little brother during quarantine. Oh, I saw that. You see, 
just within a quick Google search, you guys can find middle school students just like you doing just something super simple and small to put a little bit more positivity in the world. Kind of where my story started was my very first college class. I remember going to my very first college class. I was super pumped. I was really excited. I walk into my very first class and I meet one of the grumpiest adults I've ever met in my life. And he happened to be my very first college professor. If I had to come up with a cartoon character for him, this is what he looked like, right? Now, some of you guys are like, I know that. I've seen him. Yeah. Now, in this class, he gave us a class project. And in this class project, what he did is he divided our class into three teams. And each team had to organize an event out in the community that would get media attention. Meaning we had to organize something that was cool enough that when the news heard about it, they put us on the news. So one team, they decided to do a 5K race. They didn't make the news. Another team, they decided to do a hot dog eating contest. My team, we wanted to do something different. We thought, what if we could get two middle schools and three high schools? And what if we could get them to band together to make a massive difference in the world, but to do it in just 15 days? Well, we wrote a rough draft out, we gave it to the college professor. About four days later, I get the paper back from the teacher and it has all this red ink on it, which is never a good sign from a teacher. And so I couldn't help but notice on the cover page, he wrote this one sentence. He says, if you want to make a bigger difference, change your audience. I had to read it again. He says, if you want to make a bigger difference, change your audience. You see, he loved the idea of us trying to make a difference in the world and to do it in 15 days. What he did not agree with was the fact that we chose middle school students and high school students. In his eyes, he's like, if you really want to make a difference in the world, you need money, connections, and resources. So focus on people with money, connections, and resources. Basically, we shouldn't focus on students, we should focus on businesses, corporations, and adults. And so we had a choice. We could either take his advice, or we could prove him wrong. So guess what we decided to do? Prove him wrong. We met with the leadership team at the middle school. We showed them the paper. We told them about the Grumpy College professor. You see, there's a bunch of adults out there that think a bunch of middle school students can't make a difference in the world, right? And that's who we wanted to prove wrong. And so we were coming up with all these ideas, but then there was this one eighth grader. In the meeting, she was sitting way back in the corner, she raised her hand and she goes, look, I don't think every single school should do their own thing. She goes, I think we should all band together as a team. Working and moving together, that's a force to be reckoned with. And I thought, that's a great idea, but what should we do? And we were coming out with more ideas, and she goes, raise your hand again, she goes, what if we can get every single school to band together and to collect a bunch of shoes? And I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. But then we had to research, if the news comes out, they're gonna ask me, like, why shoes? And so we had to do some research. And here was some of the things that we found. That there's currently over 300 million children in the world that go barefoot every day, 300 million. This would be like the vast majority of our entire country being so poor that your mom and dad couldn't even afford a pair of shoes. To put it in more perspective, last year in the United States, during COVID, during lockdown, in our country, we purchased over 2.4 billion shoes, which to me raises a question. If in America we bought 2.4 billion brand new shoes, where did the 2.4 billion old shoes go? And they go one or two spots. First spot, any guess? Trash. Second spot. Trash. Not Goodwill, not Jordan. They just end up hanging out, collecting dust, just chilling in your closet. How many of you guys just have old shoes you never wear, just chilling in your closet? Awesome. Put down your hands. So this is what we decided to do. We set a goal to do 5,000 pairs of shoes in 15 days. 5,000 pairs. Good news was is the newspaper came out to cover our big assembly, which is remember what I needed to get an A in the class. So the next day, I go to the coffee shop, I get, I get a coffee, I get the newspaper, first time I've ever been in the newspaper, I open up the article and it's titled, Local Students Think They Can Collect 5,000 Shoes. Keyword, did you guys catch it? Think. I'm like, wait a minute, you think we can do this? Now the newspaper was doing the exact same thing as a college professor. They were telling everyone, like, look, middle school students, you guys set your goals too high. You need to settle for mediocrity. 5,000, are you crazy? 
right? This lit a fire under everyone's butts. So the middle school came up with a brilliant idea. They decided to write all the elementary school teachers saying, look, we're collecting shoes, can you help out? Then we had all these elementary school classrooms breaking in hordes and hordes of shoes. We had churches, fitness gyms, community organizations. Within 15 days, we collected over 8,000 pairs of shoes. And we used the parking lot to sort them, so we had parking spaces for size ones and twos and threes and fours. But as we were sorting the shoes, the same girl that came up with the idea to collect shoes got another idea. As we're moving the shoes, she's like, Brian, you know what would be really cool? I'm like, what's that? She's like, what if we could take these shoes and be the ones to give them away? Like, what if we could travel halfway around? Like, what if we could go to Africa? And then she keeps moving the shoes. And I stop, I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Let's go to Africa. And she's like, wait a minute, seriously? <laughs> now, I've never been to Africa. I had to go, imagine me talking to your mom and dad. They're like, look, can your son and dog go to Africa? Your parents would be like, ha, ha. is it safe? I was like, ha, ha, ha. yeah. I know they have lions and stuff, but Akuna Matata, right? <laughs> well, lo and behold, we ended up pulling it off. You see, this is where my story changes. You see, we found an orphanage halfway around the world. And in this orphanage, it was in central Kenya. And we ended up boxing up overall. 8,000 pairs, 162 boxes of shoes, and we put them under the plane. It took us 37 hours to get there. And at the orphanage, there's basically three types of orphans. The first type of orphan is you're an AIDS orphan, which basically means your parents died of AIDS, you have HIV yourself, a disease there's no cure for, a disease that could take your life. The second type of orphan is a complete orphan. Someone who's abandoned by their mom and dad, they don't know their last name, they don't know how old they are, and the third type is a refugee. Someone whose parents are murdered or displaced due to political violence. And as we began this journey halfway around the world, we, as we drive down those bumpy roads, all of us are completely silent. Because when you look outside, it's exactly like you see in National Geographic. You just see immense poverty all around you. And then finally we get to the orphanage gates. When we get to the orphanage gates, the driver honks his horn. And when he honks his horn, the gates slowly start to open up. And as they open up, we're greeted by over 162 smiling kids. We're the first visitors they've ever had. We're the first people from America they've ever met. You get out of the van and you get mobbed by kids. You have kids dangling off your hands, off your legs like you're a real celebrity. And then the girls get out of our van. And when the girls got out of the van, all the girls in the orphanage scream. And I'm like, what is going on? And she said, well, I went to Francis, our driver, and he goes, look, this is, the first, <laughs> this is the first time they've ever seen somebody with long hair. Now think about that for a second. Imagine being so poor that your mom and dad couldn't even afford shampoo and conditioner. And all of a sudden they see someone with long hair, and they're like, whoa. Kindness takes bravery. I'd like to say that making the world a better place is easy, but it's not. There's a lot of negativity out there. It's easy to put more negativity out there. It's easy to kick someone while they're down, while they're feeling down and sad and hopeless. It takes a lot of bravery and courage to lift people up. Number two requires action. That you spread kindness everywhere you go. And the thing is, when you do an act of kindness, it quickly begins to spread. Watch this, everyone take your finger. Point at the person next to you. Give that person a compliment, ready, go. <laughs> Give the other person a compliment. Ready, go. Point at the teacher that's closest to you. Say, you look beautiful today. Oh my gosh. You guys, you see what happened to their face? Now, you can kick the light. Do you want to kick the lights back on? Now, this is why I'm here at your school. Farmsville. When I came back from that school, I noticed, when I came back from that school, I noticed the impact that a bunch of middle schools could have, have around the world. Just come up with a kindness idea. Kindness idea, you ready? Okay, three, two, one. Open the door. Make a compliment. It'll be fine. Okay, say it loud, say it loud. Um. ideas. All right, you got it? Okay, don't let his game face fool you. He's like, I got this. All right, here we go. You got to go first. 
Are you ready? You're the reigning champ. Ready? Three, two, one. Be respectful. Be positive. Be kind. <laughs> All right, you ready? Kindness idea. Okay, you gotta go first because you're the champion. All right, keep going back and first so the first person is like, ah, oh, and then they lose. Here you go, ready? Three, two, one. How about your parents? How about teachers? How about others? Ooh. Open the door for someone. Respectfully. Love someone. How about what you want to be treated? Treat others the way you want to be treated. How about people that have disabilities? Ah! 